This is how we really play 40k. Warhammer 40,000 is expensive and there are so many parts that you need to pay for. The models, the paints, the rules, the codex, the mission deck, the terrain, the dice, the tape, the everything else. Hopefully you also don't need to pay someone to play with you. But for this you do need electricity, the internet, and I know you have that one. Unless someone has downloaded this video, burnt it to a disc and you found that disc while walking in the park and then decided to play the mystery DVD in a DVD player, in which case, can I have my disc back? I couldn't find it when I retraced my steps in the park and I think that's where I lost it. So you need a computer and you need Steam installed on the computer and Tabletop Simulator is bought through the Steam page. It often goes on sale and it is pretty cheap. Tabletop Simulator is designed to play chess, card games, and it can be modified to play almost any board game, which kind of sucks if you made a board game to sell, but some games are officially licensed and can be bought as add-ons. But if you want to have a board game night with your friends, you don't need to travel to play the game and chat. Tabletop Simulator has been modified to play 40k. You can get the armies, the maps, including Games Workshop, tournament terrain layouts, and dice, make an army virtually, and then play 40k. It's popular in my Discord, the link is in the description if you want to find another Battle Sister, Gene Stealer, Cult, or Death Watch player to play a game against. So here's how to set it up. We're on Steam. We buy Tabletop Simulator. It costs £16.75, which is less than even one character model sold by Games Workshop. Of course, I have affiliates linked in the description where you can buy models cheaper. But Tabletop Simulator is cheap, and it goes on sale very often. We want to run Tabletop Simulator, and unless you have a 3D VTuber model and want to play through Steam VR, which I generally don't recommend, just play normal Tabletop Simulator, and we'll start a single player game for now. The first thing we want is an army. So we go to the Steam Workshop for Tabletop Simulator, and we get Force Organization. Alternatively, you can search the Tabletop Simulator Workshop for a specific army. For example, if you didn't like that the Battle Sisters in the Force Organization are all painted as our martyred lady, you could search the Tabletop Simulator Workshop for Sacred Rose or Bloody Rose models. There's a bit of a lag as Force Organization loads up one of the armies because it is loading in potentially hundreds of pieces. At this point, you can mess around with Yellow Scribe, but I usually don't. You have to make an army in New Recruit, then export it as Yellow Scribe, that gives you a code, then here you can click yellow scribe, input the code, and then you have to put the models from the table area into here, and then you associate models with the unit cards. That takes extra time for extra gain. It lets you see the data sheets of a unit, or you can have the data sheets on the digital table, or you can tab out to say Warpedia. In Force Organization or wherever else you are, pick the models you want, make the army of the models, and save all of the models as one object. Try now to load in that one object to check that the army loads in full. It is gonna be a waste of time to accidentally only save one model and then you have to do it again, so check. There is a maximum number of digital models that can be saved as one object, so a Gene Stealer Cult Horde may need to be saved as two separate objects. To get the base part, which will give you a tracker for victory points, I recommend the FTC Competitive 40k 10th edition base. This gives you the framework for the game. At this point you can add in more things like the terrain, so that you can play the game on the board that's going to be in the middle. So there are more workshop elements to add, and you can search up particular terrain layouts. Some of these battlefields are very abstract, some of them are incredibly narrative and fun, and you can add your own terrain, or you can also find tournament style terrain layouts. When you add these in, you want to add them as additive load. If you just load, it can scrap your current session and load only the new thing. If that happens, you can go to save and load, which has some auto saves in it. To get the mission deck for 2025-2026, that's a separate workshop thing. The FTC base part does have a set of cards. It's just not the best looking ones if you want cards that are scanned copies of the original cards. And this is also how you get twists. No one who scans things for Tabletop Simulator seems to like asymmetric missions, so they're rarely scanned and don't come up as a deployment option. But Warpedia has you covered there. You can read these tiny cards either by increasing the size of the cards with plus or minus on your keyboard, or hovering over and pressing Alt, and then scrolling to see it better. The FTC base has several maps available to just set up by clicking buttons, this doesn't include terrain, it just shows you the deployment areas. Make sure you've set up objective markers for the correct layout, be it Strike Force or Incursion, because in the 2025 mission deck, 
those have different distances. There is a button to raise objectives, so if there is sloping terrain, like a big hill on one side, that the objective marker would otherwise clip into, you can press the plus button here to raise it up. If you wanted to add in your own objective markers, that's something else you can find on the workshop, and once again, use additive load to add them in. You can move any objective markers by hovering over them and pressing L, that unlocks them, move them to a new position, and press L to lock them again. This is how you could set them up for a crusade game. It's also how you can lock and unlock them so you can move them. For example, if you're using the Unexploded Ordnance primary mission. Let me explain how to use the dice roller because this lets you do lots of complicated dice rolls really, really quickly. It's how you can make regular games of 40k much faster by doing it online. So if I want to clear the mat, right click to clear the mat. If I want to fire five bolt guns and they fire two shots each, I can just click plus 10 dice. I can then click roll all dice and the dice appear with a roll. I could try and shake all the dice up and then roll them, but that isn't as good as picking them up and dropping them into the brown box, and that rolls them for you. If I was hitting on threes and wounding on fours, I can right click this button and that gets rid of the ones and the twos. That's the red part of the button. Alternatively, if I was hitting on threes but re-rolling ones, I can click the white side and then I re-roll the ones. And then to roll to wound, I just click roll all dice, and now I know on a four plus what I get. I can move away the three. Down here, I can see my opponent's dice. So on the blue side, the opponent's side, I can click copy red dice, roll all dice, and there's the armor saves done. You can do rolls far more complicated than a few bolter shots. Today I was firing five auto guns, a seismic cannon in rapid fire range, and a mining laser. So I can click 10 for 10 red dice. That's gonna be my auto gun shots. I can then change color to blue, add in four seismic cannon shots, then change to black, and add in one mining laser shot. And say I was Gene Stealer Cult in the Host of Ascension, I'm coming from reserve, so I have sustained hits. I can roll all the dice, and then tap sustained, and it gives me two more dice because there was two more sixes. If I was using a stratagem to allow me two critical on fives, then I right click sustained, and that gives me six, Four for the fives, two for the sixes. If I had a Primus with the unit and I wanted to reroll hit rolls, I can right click the three and that rerolls anything that's a three or lower. It also picked up these extra dice, which it shouldn't do because you do rerolls before you check for any critical hits. To show you this done quickly, roll all dice, right click to reroll at anything a four or a less because we can get criticals on a five, right click to remove the misses, right click to apply sustained fives. Then roll all dice again, and this is our wound roll. Our opponent can copy the dice, right click here to remove the failures, and then roll saves. And that is this ragtag group of desert nomads fired. This particular combo with the Primus and the rerolls doesn't work anymore because in the balance patch the Primus was changed to no longer have full rerolls to hit, but it works as a dice roller example. Now you've done that, save this as a game. It is something you can come back to later. And having a saved version means the next time you play against someone on Tabletop Simulator, you won't need to additive load all of these separate things, like the cards, like the objective markers. It also means we can do the next step. We're going to go back to the main menu and start a multiplayer game. This can be public with a room name and a password, or you can have only friends on Steam join. However you do it, tell the person you're playing to get in the game. They need a copy of Tabletop Simulator 2 and have to have made an army. Talking through Discord to each other is normal, or you can do it by phone call if you are a friend. Sorry, I shouldn't cause such existential dread as suggesting a phone call. The link to my Discord is in the description. But get your opponent to the virtual room. The first person to get there can pick to be red or blue. I pick red, and my opponent will be like, I'm blue, dabba dee dabba die. They load in their army, and away you go. To move models, left click and click and hold to drag a model. Releasing left click drops the model. Hold tab while moving a model to see how far you are moving. It's set in inches. If you want to change it to centimeters because you're playing Battlefleet Gothic, you can do that from the menus along the left side. Left click and drag a box over a unit to select the unit and then click and hold to move them as a group. You can figure out lots of other abilities within Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is frequently used to test army lists for new players and for tournament players to make sure that their army is extra horrifying. 
It doesn't matter how many models you need, Tabletop Simulator has you covered. Literally covered. In the next video, I will explain the advantages and disadvantages of playing 40k online like this. Right here. Subscribe to the channel and my darlings and viewers, have a great day playing 40k online.